at you guys again. Oh, now, Trista, you know better. Ugh. Fine. I promise not to rap at you until Liar Liar Heart's on Fire. <laughs> you guys have plenty of seasons before that. Yay! They're gonna stay! <laughs> well, good. So, that means we can uh, talk about Death and Chains. It's the Celesta episode. Yes, it is. I like it. How many chakrams do you give it if you like it so much? Why don't you marry it? <laughs> I don't like it that much. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I give it four. I like it. It's got Celeste. I really like Celeste. I like Celeste. What about you? Three and a quarter. Okay. I throw around like quarter shot mm-hmm. because yeah. I don't care uh, much for Gabrielle's storyline at all. Uh-huh. Um, uh huh. And Sisyphus creeps me out. Like, <laughs> With those big, the big bulging googly, bug eyes, googly eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was done with that, man. I was just done. <laughs> he seemed a little crazy. A little? A lot. <laughs> a lot? A lot. A lot. Okay. Oh, so, right. this one is based on a Greek myth. Uh-huh. So, we have some that are based on, like, biblical stories. Right. Some people may call them myths. I personally, you know, think that that's up to everybody's discretion. Right. Um, you guys do you what you believe, believe it, because I believe what I believe, and everybody's entitled to the same rights that I have. So, <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> that's that one customer that came in the store today. Uh-oh. That's, that's neither here nor there. Anyway. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's, he's, he's entitled to dump bedpans for his entire life. <laughs> Dirty ones. Okay. From prisoners in right. jail. All right. Not really. I have nothing against people that dump bedpans, by the way. So if you guys do that, go you guys. Right. Because it, it takes people that, that are willing to do yep. things like that. Yep. You know? Yep. I know. The world would be one huge dump if we didn't have the trash. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. It's like me. The world would have all kinds of loose screws if we didn't have a hardware store. <laughs> you darn too. You right. guys rock on, man. Anyway, so it's based on a Greek myth. Yeah. Yeah. The myth of Sisyphus. Sisyphus. Yes. Right. Um, Sisyphus was... In Greek mythology, a very uh, intelligent, manipulative fella. And when he went to the underworld, he imprisoned Phantos, who is death. Right. And uh, let me back up a little bit. I was going to say, how did he end up in the underworld? He ended up in the underworld because Zeus, king of gods, <clears throat> uh-huh. enjoyed frolicking right. with people that were not his wife, as most men do. Um, so, anywho, Sisyphus went and played Tattletale. Zeus sent him to the underworld. Sisyphus uh, looked up Thantos, so there was no death. Ares, you know, was pretty pissed off because he's sending all these soldiers and troops to war and nobody's fucking dying! <laughs> so he goes to Hades and he's like, dude, what up, unk? You know? <laughs> And uh, so they, they free Thantos, they find Sisyphus, and Hades sentences him to push a giant boulder uphill. Uh-huh. And then once the boulder gets to the top of the hill, it down goes right it goes. back down. And, and he has to do that for always and eternity. eternity. <laughs> you know, over and over and over. Oh, God, oh. that would drive me crazy. Yeah. Oh, it's stupid. It is. Well, not for me. I don't feel a thing. But anyhow, <laughs> okay, so we, uh, you know what else I don't really get? What? I don't get the fact that the opening scene yeah. for this, and this aired when? Uh, November 13, 1995. That's right. Um, mm-hmm. actually, um, I'll go ahead and tell you guys that the date that this aired is actually an oopsie. Right. It's the largest oopsie in the entire episode. It's... But we'll get to that in a second. Right. Okay. But anyway, it bugged me because when we when we open with this episode, we see Sisyphus and Karis, who is his wife. Yeah. And they're waiting on death. Right. You know, and you know that something is not quite right because Karis is trying to talk Sisyphus out of doing something. Uh-huh. We don't know what. And we see death appear and she's ap- approaching the soldiers and dude's like, hey, you can't go in there. Right. But hey, stick around and maybe we can have a good time. And he puts his hand on her and she mm. 86 is him. He cro- she doesn't technically 86, him, but he dies because he touched it. Right. Um, and then the other two are just like, okay, <laughs> bounding back. Yeah. Not touching her. <laughs> but it kind of, it's always confused me because you have people that die daily, right. most of the time alone. Mm-hmm. And every now and then you have a mass quantity at one time because every time you blink, somebody dies. Right. Also, every time you blink, 
somebody's born. born. So I don't understand, like, the people that die on a daily basis, that die alone. And for that matter, Xena and Gabrielle and Joxer, when they died in the series, death didn't come, touch them, you know. <laughs> I mean, they croaked, yeah. but yeah, it was like, oh, so I didn't think that that was right, that he got a personal visit from death and she was going to eat, drink, and be merry with him until, you know, he chained her up. <laughs> but yeah, it's, that, that, that bugged me, that he got a personal visit in like mass quantities, because even at the end when everybody died. You know, uh-huh. even then it took them, you know, a while. But what happens when you have like a freaking bombing or something, man? You know, <laughs> right. like Chinese black powder explodes all over the place and it kills people instantaneously. Uh-huh. You know, it's like she can't be in two places at once. What is she like a god or something? Maybe she's got little minions that she sends out to help. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. know. But that always bugged me. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. So after opening scene, we cut to Zena and Gabrielle. And what did you and notice about? And Gabrielle has a different outfit. You know why? You want me to tell you why? It's an oopsie. They yeah. screwed up. You want me to tell you why? Go for it. So the network, when uh, Death and Chains was aired, it was actually aired by mistake. It was supposed to be aired the week after Who's in Harlots. Right. Who's in Harlots was supposed to be aired before this one. Yeah. But instead, they aired this one first, and they aired Hoops and Harlot second. Okay. And if you look at around Gabrielle's neck, she has, like, the Rite of Cast necklace around right. her neck. Um, she doesn't have a staff. Why doesn't she have a staff? No. You, you got nothing? I got it. It's okay. Go for it. So, the, uh, whole, the whole theory with Gabrielle's staff, and you can actually see it in a couple episodes, but Ephany gives her her staff at, yeah. after Hooves and Harlot, right? But then yeah. it just, like, randomly disappears. Just disappears. And then Gabrielle has a folding staff. Right. That folds up and goes into the saddlebag. Small mm-hmm. enough to fit Zena's saddlebag. So that's kind of the thought process with where Gabrielle's staff is, is that it's in the saddlebag. Okay. So that's why there's no staff for those of you guys that are like, yeah, but if it's an oopsie, where's your staff? Because after Hooves and Harlot, she always has it with her. Right. But anywho. So yeah. So that's your, your biggest oopsie in the entire, in the entire episode. Yeah. So the next. Nay, in the entire first season. Yeah. yeah. So. The next episode, which yeah. which is Who's in Harlots, you'll see she's back in her, her Potadia attire. Her Laura Ingalls outfit. <laughs> her Little House on the Prairie Gabrielle outfit. Uh, and then at the end, she will have the outfit that she is wearing this episode. Right. And then so. and then freaky zombie Dayhawk person inherits Gabrielle's Little House on the Prairie outfit. But that's in a later episode. <laughs> that's the one, do you know? That's, uh, that's the one with the, uh, the one, oh God, what is her batshit crazy friend's name that I can't stand? Oh, oh, the blonde. Yeah. The, uh, oh, oh. With like the with like the Cindy Lauper hair. Yeah. What the uh, fuck's her name? Se- Seraphin. Seraphin. Yeah. Hey, I remember the Good one. job. Up Woo-hoo. top. Woo! I tend to forget. I remember. I hate her. <laughs> she was annoying. I tried to block her from my memory, but no, okay. that happened. All right, back to Death and James. Right? Death, death likes bondage. Don't know. Every time I hear that, I'm like, this was getting kinky with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's great. Anyway, okay. So, yeah, so Sisyphus captures her. Yeah. yeah. As you know, tells her, sit down at the table, on the chair, and then whoosh, her hands get it. We've already moved past this. But you didn't mention that. Well, they know what happens. Okay. We don't have to go, like, second by second. All right. Her candle just, like, floats away, and then it starts melting down. Zoom! <laughs> okay, anyway. This episode's right. also called uh, Death is M.I.A. Missing in Action. The short name for it they okay. used at, like, the table reads and for that. Okay. A little bit of trivia knowledge for you guys. Already. Okay. Yeah. So, so you have so, yeah. you have Gabrielle that's like kind of enviously looking at these two lovers, <laughs> and she's like, you know, why can't I find somebody? Why can't that? What you know? Uh huh. And Zena kind of gets this look on her face, like, um, okay, <laughs> you know. <laughs> She doesn't say anything. She just listens. Yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, Gabrielle's like whining. And this is another place that I fall out with the subtext. Okay. Yeah. Because a com a pretty common idea that people have is the episode of the Titans. They think that afterwards, at that point, is when. Zena and Gabrielle began a relationship. Okay. I do not see that as so because of conversations like this, you know, uh-huh. when, which now somebody, when I was reading my research, somebody pointed out, you know, 
Well, it may be that Gabrielle was looking for commitment from Zena, but Zena at that point in time is a very non-commitment type person. So maybe right. she was fishing to see if there was any serious feelings there or not. Right. But obviously there wasn't at that point in time or she didn't feel there was. So she moves on to tell us. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But that that's why I have trouble with stuff. Yeah. So anyhow, yep. Gabrielle tells Zena that she can pick her own apple. Right. And then an arrow goes through an apple. Yes. It's Tox's. Yes. I hate Tox. So do I. He's very annoying. He reminds me of a pirate with a really bad hair. <laughs> so he wants Zena to join his army. And, you know, there's a strict, uh, what is it, policy rule, whatever. <laughs> join or die. Mm-hmm. So they fight. And he dies. Maybe. He doesn't. No. Like for a fraction of a second. His eyeballs are shut. He ceases to breathe. But then his eyeballs pop back open. Right. Now, here's one thing about Toxius. Yeah. So, all the other people that died, uh-huh. all of them were like achy and hurting, right. but Toxius seemed like he was invincible. Like, he felt absolutely nothing. Yeah. And so old, did his army. Had his big old fake-looking gaping wound on him. And so does his army, because, you know, <laughs> he ran one of his soldiers through. All of them. Yeah, that's right. All he, of them. He, all of them. Ran all of them through. And none of them act like anything faced them, but, you know, you right. have... You have the people that are in the hospice that are in pain and that suffering. Pain and, yeah, and I never got that either. Yeah. Oh, kind of. Yeah. yeah but. <sighs> so, moving right along. I had to laugh, though, at his big old big wound. That kept changing sizes. <laughs> yeah. First it was like a tiny one. Then it was like big old long one. And then yeah. at one point, like, his <laughs> guts were starting to protrude out of it. And then the next one, it was just <laughs> flat and bloody. And yeah. There's another minor oopsie, guys. Yeah. Yay. So, you know, Zena and Gabrielle walk away thinking he's dead. Dead. Okay. And then, uh, uh, is this where we have Hades yeah. come in? And Hades he's... played by the magnificent Eric Thompson. Now, see, I like this Hades. I don't like I the one know. in the later episodes. I don't like He looks this, like a rat. Yeah, this Hades I like. I think he played it. He played it really well. He played it better. He played it grim, but not mean. Right, right, right. And I think that that's what, because the Hades in the later episodes was like stereotypical Hades. It's uh-huh. like, they almost had him formulated like like the devil, which is what a lot of, like, the, the Christians uh-huh. teach that Hades is the Greek mythology version of the devil. He's not. He's not. No. Um, they also teach that Hades is slain for hell, but it's, it's not. not. No. And Hades in Greek mythology is actually the complete opposite of what Christians and religious people right. that don't understand Greek mythology properly yeah. think of Hades. Yeah. You know? So yeah. I, I felt like he, he did really well. He did. I like that. I do too. <laughs> he also plays Hades and Hercules, right? Yes. It's been so long since I've watched Hercules. He does. He plays Hades in four episodes of Xena, and he plays Hades. Yeah. He actually plays Hades and Hercules in the following week's episode, uh-huh. the Hercules episode that followed this one. Um, Eric Thompson's in it as Hades. Mm-hmm. Sisyphus and Charis are also in it. Um, it's uh, Highway to Hades right. was the Hercules episode, but that was why Sisyphus didn't die in the ending of this one, is because they needed him for the storyline in Hercules. Hercules. So, which that's, that bugged Liliana. Yes, because you have uh, Celesta. Right. You're thinking she's coming for Sisyphus because it's his time to go, and then at the end, she doesn't take him. She just, you think she's going to be all like Pandora in that freaky slow-mo scene with the box? <laughs> mm. So yeah, that always kind of, kind of bugs. It's like, then why was she there if she wasn't coming for him? The script writers changed their mind. Yeah. So that that kind of always bugged. I'm just like sitting there like, wait a minute. Well, instead she takes someone else. We'll get to that. Well, here here's the thing, though. Death is supposed to be like all-knowing. Right. Because like she says, I know everyone's name. She tells Karis. Yeah, in the I, know scene, scene. I know everyone's name. Yeah. <laughs> like, kind of my job. Right. You know, but it's, it's like she knows everybody's name. So she has to know a scheduled time of when everybody's scheduled to die. Right. So she would obviously know if Sisyphus had summoned her, which is a really common theory, is that Sisyphus actually summoned death so that in hopes that he would be able to change her mind about himself yeah. and taking him, you know, mm-hmm. that's a pretty common theory. But then the, the theory that goes after that is, you know, he went mad, he invited her under the guise of sharing a meal and <clears throat> bound her just in order to kill her. But death would have known the whereabouts of where Talus would have been yeah. at the point in time that he was going to die, which is a pretty common theory of why 
she was at Sisyphus's house when she is because all of that was somehow or another ordained to right. happen the way that it. But I don't know because she couldn't have known that Zena was going to come in and save her. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's no, don't that's know. fuzzy. But anyway. So yeah. So Toxius is a giant gaping hole. Wow, that sounded really bad. <laughs> you guys, forget you ever heard that. Okay. okay good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Then, uh, and then we're like Zena and Gabrielle and a bunch of walk well, like and Zena's trying to use her medical knowledge to save them. Find medical skills. And Gabrielle's going to try and help other ones. Uh-huh. And she's got a victim that's been really, really hurt. Really well, they're all hurt. They're all. But she's got one that's not comfortable and is kind of panicky and she's trying to calm them down and then Enter Talus. Enter Talus, who tells, tells the, story. the story of Eo and Ephesus. Huh? And uh, that's all it took to, to, to nab Gabrielle with the shepherd's hook. That is all it took. Because she was impressed that he was, you know, telling a story because that's what she does. Well, she even told Zena he knows every line of Sophie. Wasn't, wasn't he the one that said... I've never met a girl who knows every line of Sophocles. That's right. Yeah. I had them mixed up. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> I mixed them up. Oh, like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. I remember him saying that. So now we have Gabrielle's flavor of the week. She's like Baskin Robbins. <laughs> in 31 flavors, man. However, however, uh-huh. we do know that nothing happened between Gabrielle and Tess. Yeah. Because when she married Perdiccas, you know, this is for my friend. When she married him... <laughs> She told him that she'd never been with anybody. Right. You know, so the theory goes, nothing happened. It was just a little schoolgirl crush, casual uh-huh. flirtation thing. And she was more overtaken by his knowledge and his ability right. to do what she wanted to do. Right. So, anyway. Okay. So then, yay. Uh, they go down by the pond to get water. Yeah. And then we have Toxius on the back. Mm-hmm. The undead Toxius. Undead. <laughs> He's not a vampire. No, no, he's not. He's just annoying. <laughs> but um, and it, Gabrielle and Talos before Toxius got back in jail talk about uh how they need to get to the castle, and he mentions something about how well, well, well I can get you guys there because yeah, he says he my mother used to work in the castle, yeah. and I grew up grew up there, so he knows all the ins and outs of it. Yeah, and uh, so that helped. It was like oh, good, you know. Yeah. And he was like sweet, yeah. and and then Toxius. And then Toxius comes up. So, Xena uh, bends off Toxius. Right. Again. 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 <laughs> and then so, she decides she's going to go on to the castle. But, I, yes. <laughs> go ahead. I always found it funny, you know, when Zena throws a shock room and it turns into a saw, cuts off the branch, and falls on top of Toxius. <laughs> yeah. I, I always found it funny that he couldn't just move the... I mean, it wasn't a huge trunk to where... He couldn't move it off of him, but I found it funny. He's just like struggling, and it. it, it I, I just found it funny. <laughs> <laughs> I find oh, it funny that you found it. Funny. <laughs> I find it funny that you're laughing about. It. I did. I, it's awesome. I found it funny that he couldn't just move it off of him because it hit him in that giant gaping wound, right? I mean, and it it was sawed off. It wasn't attached to the tree anymore. It could have just rolled right off of him. Kind of. Or he could have just lifted it right off because it wasn't a big, a big trunk. Well, you know, or branch, whatever. The thing is, he was he was technically dead. He was, isn't <laughs> dead, and dead people are the laziest fuckers in the world. They just lay there, you know. <laughs> okay. I don't mean that disrespectful to dead people. No, some I know. some of the people that I care most about in the world are dead. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I, I don't mean that. Hate. No. I sound very callous sometimes now that I'm listening to myself talk. I don't mean it that way, guys. No, no. I, I, I no. like almost everybody. Yeah. And this is the only time we see the chakram turn into a saw. <laughs> I mean, it just, it just goes. <laughs> yeah. Or do we see that again? No, we see it turn into a saw do again. We? I don't remember. Not in the sense of like a skill saw form in the word, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Anyways, that's a whole different other thing. That very much so goes on your beliefs of the shark, of the chakram and how it works. Uh-huh. Because some people think that when Xena throws it and one pattern on one side is shown, it's dull. Uh-huh. It's, you know, that's the one that she uses just to, like, knock people's hands, knock the swords right. out of their hands or something like that. But if she throws it on the one that has, like, the saw blade pattern, yeah, it's that sharp. turns into it sharp. So that just really depends on anybody's views of, of the chakra and right. the way that the chakra is used. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So anyway. But what, but what do I know? 
So back to Sisyphus' castle. Not to be confused with syphilis. No, not at all. No. <laughs> so he makes the comment to Celeste that, you know, I no I noticed that if you're not holding your candle, it burns down very nicely. Yeah, because if she's not holding it, it burns down. And once it burns all the way, no more death. Right. Death dies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think that death would die and like never be in existence again though I think it would be like with the gods when they lose their powers you know somebody can take the throne from them I don't know though I don't I don't There's know either not really a, a myth that supports that I don't know oh you guys fun fact for you guys what oh you know this one already okay what is it I'll be writing notes on Lily and I look over my shoulder what you doing <laughs> this is this yes. makes an appearance in another episode. Ah, yes. Spit it out, honey. What is it? Ah, uh, we talked about this last night. I know. Oh my goodness. Which episode? Say was, it. Which episode was it? Uh, Say it. Oh yeah, I can't remember now. One little, two little, three little. Oh no, not happening on the west coast. Oh yeah, people I, in the south would get that. I can't remember it now. Ten little warlords. Ten little warlords. There That's you go. That's right. That's right. That he's one. he's the one that uh, was trying to uh, take out ten of the strongest warlords to to replace Ares as god of war. Yeah, and they had to fight the Baracus, the big fan blown <laughs> thing. But isn't it played by a different actor though? No, it looks different. No. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a different actor. I Is mean, it? It's Sisyphus, King Sisyphus. But I believe it's a different actor. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, because huh. the other fellow was was brown eyed and, and kind of Yeah. He had like monk hair. Yeah. So yeah, different actor. My bad. Again. Yeah. I've had a long day at work. I've had a long week I mean, at I work. I knew I knew Sisyphus was in another yeah. episode. But now that I think about it, it wasn't the same actor. Ten little warlords. Same the character. one with smelly Aries. Yeah. Same, smelly drunk Aries. Same character, different actor. Okay. Anyways, so back to you, Liliana. Gee, okay. <laughs> so now we got Toxius again and mm -hmm. the, his 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 army and uh he well pretty much to prove that hey you know we're invincible. We're God <laughs> He thinks God because you know he's alive. God. So God. Buffy God. reference. We got God. We got God. Buffy <laughs> reference. Yep. <laughs> so Yay. he stabs them all. They're all like Dude, cool, I'm still alive. Right? <laughs> so then, you know, they want to go after Xena. Xena. Xena, because they know that she wants to free Celeste. They're all like, oh shit, she frees her, then we freeze her, then we die. For real. Yeah. So they want to come. And in the meantime, Xena is forming a plan of her own. Uh -huh. And Gabrielle is running off about how excited she is about Talus. <laughs> and Xena tells her, well... I'm really glad that you have somebody to keep you company. Right. I want you to go to this temple. I'm sure there are some people that could use your help. Right. And comfort. Right. And I'm going to go on to the castle. Right. Now, this is... Yeah, it's good. This is where the subtext in this episode lives. Okay. Okay? okay. According to my polls. Okay. Not my polls, but polls that have been taken by other websites that are not mine back circa the 90s <laughs> and the earlier... 2000. Huh. Um, so a lot of, of subtext loving viewers believe that the reason that Xena decided to go into the castle was a version of her leaving Gabrielle into the sick because she couldn't stand Gabrielle's crush on Talos. <laughs> so they felt like this was Xena's very passive aggressive way of saying, you want to be with this dude? Okay, go be with that cat. That's fine. <laughs> you know? Okay. So they think that was the whole reason that Xena left and left Gabrielle there. Okay. To tend Okay. Yeah. That's my that's my subtext tidbit. All right. You told me that was my job, and we just had to start this pack, this yeah. podcast. So you did good. You did good. I know. All right. Okay. So yeah. Xena gets to the castle and and she does acrobatics. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's on. <laughs> she looks up and sees what 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 those sticking out of the wall. She's trying javelins. To, javelins. There we go. Because yeah. she's trying to figure out how to get in, and then whoosh, does little acrobatics. Stuff. And then I like how she knocks out the guy that comes at her. Well, <laughs> nice Zena, try. Boom. Well, Zena was the original circus <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. some nice little trappy yeah. artwork. Uh, yeah. Not on a trap. And, no. <laughs> and then when she gets in, you know, the guards coming out there, she just bah, knocks him out. One punch. <laughs> nice try. Because she's Zena. You suck. 
<laughs> so well, and then, if I could kill you, I would. Right. But, you know, she can't, so she doesn't. Then we go to Gabrielle and Talis uh-huh. back. And they're tending the stick. And there's a little old lady. And she's all, water, water. Kaltaka. She doesn't say Kaltaka. <laughs> no. Now, this lady is played by Beryl T. Wiat, who so. is one of the trick head actors right. of the Xenoverse. Right. She's in a couple of episodes of Hercules. Uh-huh. And she plays the, you know, of course, the water lady. She was the oracle. The oracle in Cradle of Hope. Uh-huh. Which, uh. Oh, God, I can't think of what her name was. In Cradle of Hope. Oh, I just... Sonara? Or something. Sonara, maybe? Something like that. It, it started with a C. She was a C word. Well, that was <laughs> that was uncalled for. She was uh, also the midwife in Them Bones, Them Bones. Uh-huh. When Xena was having the freaky dream about the, uh, the baby right? skeleton coming out. That baby skeleton yeah. was so cute. I wanted one. <laughs> Um, she played a priestess in an episode, but I can't remember which episode it was. Uh-huh. And she was also the voice of Psyche off screen in the episode Comedy of Arrows. Did Psyche's voice. To Cupid! <laughs> which is funny, oh, because okay. for some reason I always thought that was Alexandra Tidings' voice, but it wasn't. Oh. Like I, Wait, no. Yes? No, I know it wasn't Alexandra Tidings' voice. I was gonna voice. say no. That because be she weird. was Aphrodite. Yeah. But... But no, the thing was though, I thought maybe it was her using her voiceover because some uh-huh. some of it in her vocal lineup, right? I guess a lot of the intonations the uh-huh. same, but it was actually Beryl T. Uh huh. So it was like, huh? Beryl Hope, Sinara. Sinara, I told you. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I am but. only kidding. So yeah. So she tells you know Gabrielle pretty much, dude, don't freak out. But I'm going to tell you something. Right. I died today. And then all of a sudden I wasn't dead anymore. Where is death? Where is death? Yeah. And Gabrielle's telling her, you know, that essentially, well, death's been captured, but my friend Zena is going to, going to, to play hero. She warns her. Oh, if death touches her, she'll die. Or if she touches death, she go bye-bye. Yeah. She go kaput. This kind of sudden, don't you know at the end of this episode, death probably really wanted a hug? And nobody could hug her. <laughs> right. You know, that would suck. Yeah. So Gabrielle freaks out. I wonder if that stunk. Like, I wonder if she smelled like rot and decay. Ew. I'm just curious. I don't think so. Okay. I don't know. Then people would really be running from her if right? she did. So <laughs> That sound that you guys hear are my knuckles popping because that's what I do. Yes. I crack my knuckles. Sounds very... It doesn't hurt. <laughs> but anyway, so Gabrielle's freaking out. Yeah. Thinking, oh my god, I gotta go tell Zena this. Thinking that Zena doesn't know, but, you know, Zena knows Zena. everything. Yeah. <laughs> so she goes to tell us, you know, I, I gotta go warn her. And he's all like, well, I know, like, a little, I guess, secret tunnel or something to mm-hmm. get into the castle. Right. You know, I'll show you. So they they, they go off. And then, once again, we're... Gabrielle throwing all sense of caution to the wind to go rescue Zena. Who doesn't really need rescuing, but it's what she does. Yeah. Little do they know that Toxies and men are following them. Bound and determined to keep Xena from free. Right, because they pretty much split up. and Some of them follow Xena, and then the other ones follow Gabrielle. Mm-hmm. And Helen. Right. Because, you know, one of them's bound to lead them to death. To death. So. <laughs> yes. Little did they know. Both of them met death. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Okay. So they get in the castle, and Xena has a conversation with Karis. Okay. I think I'm maybe a little early, though. Yeah. I found it funny that that... King Sisyphus was all excited that Zena was in the castle. Zena! Zena! He was like, all excited about it. He wasn't like, oh shit, she's coming for me or something. A lot of people would be excited if Zena was in their castle. (laughs) They would be. Okay. (laughs) But yeah, I found it funny to look on his face. It was like, you're excited, like, happy about it. It's because he was crazy. I know. Crazy? (laughs) You ever notice crazy people always look happy? (laughs) They do! What the hell's up with that? Anyway, so yeah. yeah, so she has a, I guess, a little confrontation with uh, Sisyphus. Yeah. And then she falls through the floor. Yes, yeah, she does. She falls through the floor. But she hit that ground. Yeah, she did. After, you know, the bone from the skeletal coffin was holding on to. And the floor shook. Yeah. She, she hit felt, that floor hard. She I was felt like, the oh, earth she... move under her feet. Uh-huh. <laughs> she did. And then we cut to Talos and Gabrielle. We're now in the castle. Yes. And Talos has fallen through the floor. Gabrielle is on her own. Right. Running from Toxius's men. 
Yes. And <laughs> then you see freaked out Gabrielle with these giant rats. It was a rat. It was just one. This one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just one. But one rat. One rat. Where there's a rat, there's rats. It yeah. may have just been one, but Lena gets that's all the rats. one yeah, too Rio's many. just got one. Oh. But yeah, she's like, I would have died. It's like, oh my god, you can like, <laughs> see the like look on her face, like she's trying not to laugh. It's yeah. funny. But if you see the outtakes of the first, of yeah. course, she's laughing. <laughs> yeah. Well, because Renee O'Connor can keep a straight face. Oh, neither can I. <laughs> I know, but but anytime she was doing a, a serious scene where she was supposed to be scared, <laughs> and it was like a little critter. She she couldn't be, she couldn't be serious. serious. Yeah, I can relate. <laughs> but she's trying so hard to make it look like she's terrified. Right. But you can see like she's yeah. holding her holding her lips down, trying not to, not yeah. to laugh. So. That was pretty fun. And then, then Dina's in the tunnel. Is in the tunnel, and then she hears she hears this noise. Ah! It's it's Talus that joins her in the dungeon. I guess she's like, "What are you doing here? Where's Gabrielle?" <laughs> oh, she wanted to warn you not to touch death. <laughs> well, like, of course not. Right? Of course not. Duh. You see that? She knew this. Come on. <laughs> well, you would think that anybody that knew of death. Right. No, you don't go touching that. Don't go. Don't go Maybe touching. that's what we should tell out. Tell uh, our youngest. Right. Our our youngest kid. He can't keep his hands to himself. No. Sweet, sweet little boy. Yeah. But he he's so loving. Yeah. Like he has to touch you all the time. <laughs> Rub your arm oh. and then hold you. And, <laughs> and like me, I'm not a touchy feely person okay. at all. Yeah. So he'll ask me, he'll be like, can I have a hug? And I'm like, why? <laughs> because. Yeah. <laughs> this little he, look on his face. He, like <laughs> he, he gets hugs. Like, yeah. I would never tell him, no, go away. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not a, I'm, I'm like the least maternal person you will ever meet in your entire nah. life. Yes, I am. I am Joan Crawford maternal. <laughs> But anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> so maybe we should start telling him, well, you better be careful. That person might be deaf. Don't touch death. Right? Oh, maybe that'll work. Huh. I'll thought. have to try that. Okay. All right. Okay. Raising them right. All righty. <laughs> Since 2004. <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyways. Back so, to the future. Yeah. Of the, the past. past. In a time of ancient gods. Warlords. And kings. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, it's Zena's turn with the rat. Oh. They're in the tunnel. And then all these Mises just get poured on her. Yeah. Setting. Yeah. Lucy Lawless was not very entertained by it. She didn't think, she thought they would be like these cute little lab rats. That's what she said. She, yeah. she has a, she has a, we got, let, let's see what Lucy's take has. About the rat. Yeah. About the rat. It's, it's right here. It's right there. Okay. Go ahead. Read what Lucy said. So, she says... I thought they'd be lovely little lab rats, and I'd just let them dump these crates of vermin on me in the fiberglass sewer. <laughs> I was supposed to dive hard to the bottom of the pipe as soon as I felt them on me, but there was a long trail of slime at the bottom of the pile, so I really didn't want to. I left two inches between me and the pipe, just resting on my elbows and toes. I dropped my head, and they just kept dumping rats, and they yelled, cut, cut. And these rats had all nestled on my body, nestled into my cleavage and legs. It was so disgusting. <laughs> oh, God, and they stunk. They stunk and they just pooed everywhere. It was really harrowing. Anyway, you dine out on those stories and you laugh a lot afterwards. But it was far more disturbing than I thought it would be. I didn't know what I was thinking. <laughs> so, there you have Lucy Lawless's take on right. having the, the rats right. dumped on her. Yeah. But <laughs> I would have died. Oh, I mean, maybe not yeah. because death was chained up, but right. I, I would. I, I don't like rats. I'm terrified of rats, mice, and bunnies. I'm terrified. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, so yeah. So she's got all the rats on her. And clowns and people that whistle. Yeah, like not seeing, not like the, not not like that. Uh huh. But like people that whistle random tunes that yeah. have really no rhyme or reason. It reminds me of like the really creepy ice cream truck episode of Charm. Ah. Uh -huh. So I, I just <laughs> I, I just prefer not. <laughs> so anyhow, back to Xena. We never finished our Charm. That's so cool. Lost interest after pre-dive. <laughs> no Shannon Doherty? It's not. <laughs> okay. 
Anyways, Anyways. so we got Xena going, and then she and Karis have a heart to heart, and she's like, "Hey, right. he grew up in the castle, you know," and he's like, "Hey, do you remember me?" Tell us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like, "I'm not well." Yeah, and he tells her that yeah, he's supposed to die. Mm-hmm. I'm backing up a little bit. Xena's kind of freaked out about the fact. Pa- fact that he's supposed to die because she's like well does Gabrielle know? Right. And I think she got a little ticked off at him for not telling Gabrielle something was wrong. Yeah. But he didn't. No he did not. But anyway long story short Karis switches places with Xena. Right. So Sisyphus finds Karis in the cage and he's like what are you doing? Yeah he thought he he captured Xena and, and said he captured his wife. Right. And then Xena pops in behind. And they have a heart to heart and finally convince Sisyphus that he needs to let death go. Right. But Talus is the one that convinced him because he's all like, hey, I'm suffering. You know? Let me die already. Right. So yeah, so then he sees the error of his ways and he needs to help uh, release death. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that have made for an interesting series finale? <laughs> if, if you know, instead Sisyphus, if somebody just absolutely needed to die, uh-huh. he unchained death just for a fraction of a second. And uh-huh. then you get up to where, like, Xena gets her head hacked off. <laughs> and then she's like, still roaming around with no head, looking for a way to sew it back on, because <laughs> Sisyphus still has death in chains. You know? Oh, that would suck. Somebody should write a fanfic for that. Get on it. <laughs> I'm not writing it. It's far too complex. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I have anyway. a hard enough struggle with mine. So, uh, so then come Toxius and his, and his men, you know, yeah, 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 you're not gonna free her, and he's got Gabrielle. By the, by, with a knife at her throat. Right, and then... Cena's pretty much convincing him, you know, hey, take me instead. Wouldn't you rather? Guess you know, what that's considered. What? Yes. Subtext? Yes. Go ahead. No, that's that was it. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to have this long Consider, explanation. No, we consider it subtext. Anytime that they're willing to sacrifice themselves for each other, right. it's considered subtext. So he pretty much tosses Gabrielle aside and like, okay, let's go. And yeah, so they fight. And round one, fight! I just can't see why Sisyphus cannot get the damn chains unlocked. He just sits there and struggles with it. Well, he was trying not to touch death. But he wasn't. I mean, no, but he was unlocking. He was I think he was just it. nervous and he couldn't get the key in. He couldn't get it in the right hole. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh-huh. No, he can't get it unlocked. So, plus, old dude having a fight off. What is it with old men and young wives? I don't know. Like, the kings and queens, a chunk of them are old fucking men <laughs> and younger women. Uh-huh. Like, I don't get it. I know back then they had arranged marriages. Yeah. And I'm sure people married because they were gold diggers and whatnot. And, mm-hmm. I mean, what old man's going to turn down a young girl? <clears throat> uh-huh. But, anyway, I'm sorry. Go on with life. Let's go. <laughs> so, uh, Toxius is about to like Gab- Gabrielle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gabrielle. Gabrielle. So Zena throws the chakram, knocks the knife, the dagger, whatever, out of his hand, and mm-hmm. then the chakram cuts ricochets. the... Ricochets. Ricochets and cuts, cuts the, the chains. chains off death. The candle goes... <laughs> candle, you know, just floats back to her and it magically re, 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 what's the word? Re- I don't know. You sell candles. I don't... It goes back to being a full-size candle. There you go. It regenerates. Regenerates. What she was there you to go. Say, yes. Read something. Thank mm. you. You're welcome. <laughs> and then they're all like, oh, oh. Ow. And then they feel pain. Now they feel the pain. And then death touches them and they croak. They die. Yes, they do. And she goes on to live another so, day. Yeah. And then Sisyphus is like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm ready. ready. I'm going to take me. I'm, I'm good. And she's like, it's not time for you yet, but somebody's in need of me. Yeah. And then Gabrielle. She's like, what? Huh? No, no. It's a mistake. No. And then there's tears. Yes. And then that really awkward hug because Gabrielle is just trying to be comforted huh? by, you know, her her buddies died right. now, and she's trying to, to be comforted. And so she, of course, wraps her arms around Xena yeah. and lays her head on her chest. And Xena's like, whoa, whoa, what's this? What am I supposed to do? Hang yeah. on. And then she's she like, doesn't oh, do oh, the oh, yeah. emo- She doesn't do the emotional crying stuff. Hey, hey like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. But so she's like, yeah, awkward, like. But she does start, com- and she eases she into comforting her very well. And that's yeah. that's the first, that's the first time that they hug in the series. Which was, was pointed out to me. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, it's the first time they hug in the series. Okay. Which was pointed out. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. But, uh, I know. I just looked at that. Okay. Well, I was thinking. Like, oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was. 
it was pointed out to me by a uh, a user on one of the Xena platforms whose screen name is uh, Velasca for Prez. <laughs> so I was like, wait, didn't that already happen? <laughs> Velasca. Yeah. Velasca for Prez. I'm like, why? Right? Zena for, for president. <laughs> oh, no. Maybe we should go with Gabrielle because she could tell us stories. I like the presidential addresses. <laughs> That would be kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. They could do a co-presidency. There you go. They could both be president. Well, one of them would have to be first lady. <laughs> the first lady can talk just as much as the president. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Get on that. Yeah. Right. Right in. Right in. Okay. Zena and Gabrielle. <laughs> so, yes, that's Death and Chains. Death and Chains. Yep. That's the end. That is the conclusion. We now have death. Yay. Us. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Death's just a vacation from one life to the next. Right. Okay. So, yeah. It's like Peter Pan says, to die would be an awfully great journey. <laughs> now that I want to have that type of journey time soon. All right. Because, okay. you know, there's a new Zelda game coming out at some point, and i got to be here to play it. <laughs> but, anyway. There should, I, there should be a new Xena game. It's never going to happen in your heart. They should have a new Xena game for the Switch. Oh, oh my God. They should. Yeah. Okay. I think they should. Should like do a petition, you know. But there's to only going to but there's only going to be like a total of 16 games made for the Switch. Period. And one of them should be a Xena game. But they're not they already released the titles. Well, they kick one off and add a Xena. You really want to kick one? They're going to do like a <laughs> high def video game with Frogger. Oh. Yeah, I thought so, but anyway. But they should. There's going to be another Zelda one. There's always another Zelda one. Yeah, but for the Switch. Another one for the Switch? Another one for the Switch. Okay. The only other platform they've ever had, I don't know, that's because they did that for N64 and for Wii. The only ones they've had available for the same one for Zelda, other than, of course, the, the Super Nintendo was, as you know, N64 with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, and then Twilight Princess for Wii, which was actually released for GameCube, and then Skyward Sword for Wii. Uh But anyway. Okay. Sorry. (laughs) Oopsie. We're we're all range of geeks. It's not just Xena. No. Xena, Zelda, they sound kind of the same. Right. They'll be all right. Right. So anyhow, does it for Death and Chains. Your next episode, Hooves and Harlots. Who are you calling a harlot, you hoof? <laughs> Hooves and Harlots. We gotta see Ebony! Ebony is one of my favorite characters. Ebony and Melosa. I really like Ebony and I like Melosa a lot. Yes, I know. I like Ebony too. But Allison Bruce is like a freaking amazing actress. It's one who plays Melosa. Yes, plays Melosa. She's a trick head actor for you. Yeah, yeah. She's in my hands. She is. She is. She is. Melosa and she's Talia. Huh? And and she's she's the one that the, that the, desert one. Like a title of it. Like a legacy. Okay. I can't think of her name in that. <laughs> I, I will. Either. It will come to me. Yeah. If I build it, it will come. Yes. Okay. Anyway. Alrighty. You so. guys have a fucking fantabulous <laughs> weekend, day, evening, night, Morning. wherever you are. Whatever. Yeah. Um. This coming up week, I will be setting my clock back a hundred years in the past <laughs> and going to Georgia to see my family. <sighs> So I'm leaving. So oh. you guys might notice a, a little lax in in episodes, but Lillian is going to try and post a couple. Right. Um. While, get them while I'm not here. Okay. My voice will still be on it because we pre-record. Right. But anywho. Okay. All right. Yeah. Have a have a have a have a have the day that you have. <laughs> May it be wonderful. May it be wonderful. Okay. No, you know what? Take control into your own fucking hands and make it awesome. There you go. You make your day awesome. Right. Do it. Don't let anybody have enough power to make it suck. Exactly. All right, y'all. Have a good one. Happy chakrams. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good night. Good night. Good evening. Good morning. Sweet dreams. Good day. Okay. We never know how to end these things. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> no. We never know how to end them. Bye, guys. Okay, goodbye. Bye.